Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from Blade Show. We are happy to be back. Happy to be here with Eric from Spyderco. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to see you again. So good to see you guys. You brought some uh, some cool new stuff for us to take a look at yep. too. So we're gonna get right into it. Yeah. Um, trying to come out with some new stuff. Trying to push forward. It's certainly a challenge in today's times with uh, the demand and the challenge of producing. But mm -hmm. uh, still pushing ahead and forging some new stuff. Um, so where do you want to start? You want to start with some of the thin blue line, yeah, so thin we, red line? We've got a few things over here from the latest reveal, uh, and then couple things that uh, may be entirely new to you folks and a couple things that we're still waiting to arrive but we're super excited about. All right. Let's um, go. Yeah, so I'm going to jump in with yeah. the thin red line, thin blue line. Um, with these, naturally, we're starting to highlight, you know, our, our fallen officers, our fallen firefighters. Uh, both of these knives, uh, a percentage of all the money goes to the foundations for the towers to tunnels, um, the Wildland wild Firefighters Foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's for the people that have fallen or hurt themselves uh, in, in, in action. And so gotcha. we're going to make these in the Endura and the Delica, the Rescue, um, and a few other models. We might even do some in the future. But they have a, a very thin red line or blue line that goes down the back of the handle. And then on the inside of the, the handle, there's also a hint of red and yeah. blue. Um, and one of the things that we were excited with this model is just the ability to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the red and the blue on the inside really stays up. It's not just painted on. It's mm -hmm. going to be very durable. And then with the blue backspacer and the, the red, again, because it's a separate molded part and in the screw together construction, because we have the ability to do it, uh, it was nice to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it comes with VG10 blades. We wanted to just keep like the, the standard. Yep. yep keep the yep. cost a little bit more reasonable. Keep them um, so that everybody could have a chance to get them in. With VG10, with its ability for corrosion resistance, toughness, mm -hmm. edge retention, it's just a very it's nicely a great balanced steel. steel. It is. Absolutely. has been for a long time. And I like the, uh, the the way the process worked out here. You wouldn't think like the inside of the handle would be too important, but it does add just a certain visual thing to it yeah. that just brings up a little. You bit. hardly yeah. notice it too when you yeah. look straight on at the bottom. You almost yeah. have to tilt it a tiny bit. It's a it's a the inside is a nice little feature, and the yeah. thin blue line yeah. is is thin. You know, it, it's a thin line yeah, between, no, that's uh, true. between us. So. And I just love that it's another way to get another color other than black into, into some things. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so excited about the series. Uh, continue to give uh, the money to a good cause to a lot of hardworking people that Definitely. fought for us. So. Definitely, right on. Um, and then to keep going, we're going to continue to expand Warncliffs. I know that I talked to you about this. I'm a big Warncliff fan. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the Manbug Warncliff. Uh, I've talked to you about this in the past. We take a lot of pride in our Warren Cliffs, that mm. crisp tip, that flat edge. Um, and then with the teeth, you know, Spyderco uh, was one of the forefathers of serrated pocket knives. Mm. Um, and so we continue to push the, the teeth and, and evolve those to a, a great cutting performance knife. Yeah, I mean, especially on something like this size with the Warren Cliff, man, ripping through, through a bunch of boxes with something like this is just going to be so nice for such a small utility blade. Yeah, you know, the lockback, I'm, I, I know I'm a bit of a broken record here, but the lockback <laughs> is such a secure lock. Mm -hmm. You can take a tiny little knife like that and go to town with it and really feel secure. Yeah. It's got a great self-close. It brings good action. It's just a beautiful fit. Yeah, know. and enough handle on these guys, too. Even for someone with slightly larger than average hands like myself, I've got a good grip on it. Yeah. I always have. Yep. Yeah. And so, yeah, a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. The man bug uh, continues to push, you know. So the man bug Warren Cliff. Very nice, very nice. Uh, next is going to be, I guess this is the first time a lot of people are seeing this. This is the lightweight chief. So this is just off the mold. Mm -hmm. um, we're a little bit behind on some of our production, so everybody has to kind of be a little patient. The demand is is there, and with the this, pandemic, this it is brings your guys' some challenges. fault for buying all the knives. You realize that, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. So, <laughs> well, 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 one of the things you're going to start seeing a, a bit of is some of this lightweight stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, lightweight mm -hmm. gives you the ability to make a handle faster. It gives it a, th a full three-dimensional. It's very consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. lightweight brings a lot to the table. Yeah. I have to, you know, I, whenever I think of lightweights, I often think of, of Blackie Collins, the late Blackie Collins, Hall of Fame member. He really brought it to our industry. Mm -hmm. And it really gives a, us as a manufacturer the ability to, to bring high performance at a, at a higher rate at a lower cost. Yeah, yeah. And, and so with the Chief, it's going to have everything the other Chief does. That same blade thickness, same lock, uh, lighter, naturally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't have liners, so we were able to put the inserts into the handle yeah. uh, so that you could really um, have your four-position clip with a very secure clip, but Excellent. also bring the low weight. Yeah, pretty good balance point on that, too. Yeah, they, 
you know, the fit, the finish, the action, the grinding, the jimping, the, the everything. The U.S. facility is doing a fantastic mm -hmm. job of, of pushing this stuff forward. Now, I see this blade right here says M4. Is that is this just because that's the blade you have yes, right now? Yes, okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> it's not going to be M4. Sorry, guys. Standard will be S30V. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure that in time people will have an option um, to get a different because that, that is the feel. first thing I saw when you pulled that. Oh, oh yeah, that, we, we, yeah, <laughs> ni nice observation. Um, but uh, yeah, S thirty V for standard. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And you know, we always talk about you know on the channel. I've said like injection molding will get you a much more sophisticated shape for a lot less. And when it comes to you guys, it's that bidirectional texturing right there. Yeah, we take so much pride in our molding. Um, when you learn more and more about molding, it's just hard to do that kind of stuff. The way the mold pops open and the, the handle comes out, is it gonna peel out of the handle because mm -hmm. the, the texture is just so aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so being able to, to have inserts, aggressive texture, keep the part flat, make it perform like we're able to, to do, yeah, we're very pri proud of our, our lightweight cap capabilities. Very cool, very mm -hmm. cool indeed. Yep. So again, staying down that line, uh, this is uh, a larger enough. Um, so I, I, honestly, I think the blade is right at four inches, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I don't have it on me, that spec. Uh, but it is gonna give you a little bit more on there. We'll do this thing. Every time we're filming the video at the Knife Center and I take out my little ruler to measure something, Thomas says he gets to have a drink later. Yep, right under four inches. So, and yeah, so these days, um, if we say it's four inches, we want to be right there. Yeah. The last yeah. thing, or a hair under, just yeah. like you did yeah. there. Yeah, you don't um, want someone to take it and yeah. find themselves in trouble. Yeah. So uh, more yeah. and more, we're really paying attention to those lengths. Uh, and, you know, with the lightweight, we're able to, to, to bring a little bit more production to the market. This will be a salt version. It'll come with a, a molded handle as well. Um, and for your everyday tasks, if you're looking for a little bit bigger knife, yeah. The, yeah. the larger enough or the enough XL, I'm, I'm not sure we've even got the name yet. Um, uh, it's, it's always been just one of those really nice EDC fixed blades. Even the smaller one, like you've got that full grip to really push through some stuff. That extra length is just going to be, you know, the cherry on top of that. And again, talking about sophisticated handle shape, we don't just get the texturing there. We've got actual swells going on on this handle, which I've always appreciated. Yeah, you know, I, uh, my father designed that one. I still think he's a, a fantastic designer. His, his hands just tend to fit well. So yeah, he did a lot of the 3D on that and uh, proud of his work on it. Yeah, and a lot cool. of the reason we're showing these is we're starting to show them at Blade. Though they're not in a reveal, they're coming down the pipe and we're trying to get them done. Very cool, you guys, very cool. So probably, probably come in yellow, um, but we'll see. Yeah, so LC200 and? LC200, yeah. no, this will be, this H will be H1. H1. Okay, okay, um, very nice, very cool knife. Uh, speaking of LC200N, however, we've got the next guy on the table. Yeah. Um, Gee, I'm a huge fan. This is a, the Subway buoy designed by Fred Perrin. Huge fan of Fred Perrin. One of the things uh, that Fred is known for is getting that four-finger choil mm -hmm. uh, and a four-finger hole. If you look up Fred Perrin, you're going to see a four-finger hole in yeah. a lot of his designs. And, yeah. and we've encompassed that in some of our designs, like the Swick. Um, so this is going to be a, a nice you know, buoy, a, a Fred Perrin-style buoy, that is going to be LC200N with the molded-on handle, so mm -hmm. that handle's mm -hmm. not going anywhere. It's going to come with a Kydex sheath. It's incredibly light and salt, so it's not going to rust. Set up for net carry, I'm assuming. Net carry, if you want, and uh, you can pull it in when you need to use it. Um, very convenient for Very for nice. Using. And it's, it has that kind of same shape as, like, the street buoys, just yes. scaled uh, down a little and bit. And Fred, again, Fred did that one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about a guy that's got at least 30 years of knife making knowledge that I know of. And, and he goes up to a grinder and he, he hand does that out and yeah. we try to, to re, re, redo it for him. And so, yeah, he did all the 3D on that. That's gonna be a very useful little piece right there for sure. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I think it's a, a great addition to the Fred Perrin name and line. Um, yeah. yeah, It really fits him too. If you go to his table and you start looking at a lot of his knives, he does a lot of little knives. Yeah. He's not a big knife kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a perfect addition for yeah. us. Very nice piece, very nice piece. Uh, the next one, uh, people have seen, they, you know, they're coming by the booth to look at it. We're still trying to get them done. It's our Micarta Crewwear Paramilitary 2. Um, this one has full liners, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a little bit more rigid feeling in the hand maybe, though the Para 2 has always felt rigid. It's always felt very soft. Uh, yeah. We've really skeletonized the liners, though, to try to mm -hmm. bring the weight as close as we could to it. Mm -hmm. But because the Micarta isn't as 
rigid as the G10. We had to go with the with, full with liners. the real thin edges where like where the liner would less nest in. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you might get a little bow in the micarta. Mm -hmm. You know, the thin edges might break out a little yeah. bit, and so yeah, we went to the full liner so you get that full strength. And I, I have a, a friend of mine, especially, who was a little little concerned about that. But if he's watching, don't worry about it. It feel it feels, you know, exactly like you'd expect, or exactly like I would expect a pair of two to feel, even though you do have that full liner there. Yeah, it's fun to carry, you know. And with the micarta, it gives you all those great attributes that that micarta does. That different coloring, the feel in the handle. It's open back construction too, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. it's going to be easy to clean and 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 keep the weight down. Yep. Yep. And again, this is a, a crew wear blade, which we're really excited about, not the S30V on the... So even he doesn't have one right now, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, when you start zooming in on some of these, you know, we're putting different blades in and we're getting to the show. Uh, yeah, but when yeah, you get to production, yeah, yeah it'll be crew wear. No, I, I love the, uh, the finish on it. It's like the perfect kind of matte finish you would want on a, on a Micarta like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm nice. going to point it out. You'll see some machining lines on here. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be there in production. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah. You know, it's a prototype still. The backside, you don't even see the machining lines. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, production will be crisp and clean. And and, uh, and people, you know, it's the right kind of color. People will be able to dye it if they want to, make some cool colors of their own. Very nice. Yep. Very, very so nice. So excited. Market seems excited, too. I would say so. Um, then uh, the next was the K390 stretch I was going to show. Um, I know I've talked to you about it again. I know I keep saying this, but K390 is just a, a great steel. Yeah. It just cuts yeah. and cuts. It's super hard. Uh, it's, it's great in its corrosion resistance for what you're getting in its package. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, we just continue to push K390. It's just a wonderful steel. And first full production straight spine stretch. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. The other yeah, one yeah, was yeah. Uh, the ivory. Yeah, I um, love that one, too. I, I missed out on those. So this one of these is probably in my future, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. The straight spine, to me, is all looks. Yeah. You know, it's not really about a lot of the performance. Yeah. And so much about Spyderco is about performance. Um, but, you know, with the straight spine, for a lot of people, it looks like a more traditional spider coat. It does. It does. Yeah. Rather than the, uh, you know, I've always said that, you know, the traditional blade is kind of like your guys' Buck 110, you know, your guys' folding hunter, you yeah. know. It, and the, But this does bring it more in line with, like, the DNA of, of you guys a little more. Either one's going to be a great carry. And I, you know, I... You know, Spyderco does double distal taper. So it tapers mm -hmm. this way, it tapers that way. And so that yep. when you're going to cut or yep. penetrate, it just slices fantastic. And so, you know, th that really does continue to highlight what Spyderco does like to do when it's cutting a little bit different from the traditional stretch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very much looking forward to that one. Uh, and then the, the last one I brought to show you guys was the lightweight resilience. Um, we're continuing to take the tenacious family of lines, if you will, and push them towards a lightweight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've been called out that they're not really that much lighter. <laughs> <laughs> if you take a G10 yeah. and a lightweight, they're close. Well, they're yeah. close. Yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. lighter. Uh, and we'll certainly continue to keep that in mind when we're naming these things. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we wanted to make the molded handle, which gives you all the attributes I talked about earlier mm -hmm, as far mm -hmm. as molding and, and yes, higher capability grip. of production. Uh, we're also going to do an S35VN mm -hmm. uh, with them. And so, with yeah, the we, blue handle. With yeah. the blue mm -hmm. handle. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working with this facility for a very long time, um, and, and we have great confidence in their ability to bring those higher grade steels to the market yeah. at a yeah. proper heat treat and proper, proper um, fabrication. You know, you might buy some of these exotic steels from other countries or factories, and how well they process it makes it's a harder, big difference. It's harder to tell over here, right? Right. And right, so, you getting. know, we'll get some S30V lightweight. Uh, knives going out of out of China and mm -hmm. um, bring a little bit more value yeah. to that market. One of the great things I've always liked about the whole Tenacious family too is you know this area right here you've got edge coming all the way back to the handle and you've got a finger guard but it's gentle kind of sloped out you can get right behind the edge yep. which is hard to do in a lot of folders out it's there. It's such an evolved design mm -hmm. it really is and it's those little things that that bring that design yeah. out, um, yeah. you know, the, the little cutout so it's easier, Oops, or the little, you know, so that you can get to the, th the thumb hole a little bit easier, uh, the way the, the back is hooked for the, the hook for a pull cut, or mm -hmm. even if you mm -hmm. come all the way back, you can start to get some pinky on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you can really reach out. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a highly evolved design. Mm -hmm. And the more you look at knives, the more you appreciate a design yeah. like this. And especially on the budget side of things, which the lighter weight ones, I mean, even the G10 ones are, are very affordable. It's a lot of thought and care put into the design for the money you're putting out, for sure. And you know, with Spyderco, we produce knives 
in a lot of places, Italy, Japan, China, America. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, it's a topic of conversation today about Chinese knives. And, and you know, for us, uh, we continue to work with the factories we've worked with for a long time. It goes way beyond politics and borders. We, we make good knives together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we try to bring that to a balance in our overall line. And so we're going to continue to work with a lot of those factories over there to, to produce uh, high-valued knives, but probably not go overboard. Gotcha. You know, we're mm -hmm. still growing our Japanese and American and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. other lines. You just got you know, more American manufacturing, like, just to uh, catch up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to crank it out. Um, no, I know. Really cool stuff here. Um, I don't know. If I were to pick a favorite right now, I'm a fixed blade guy, so you know it's probably this guy. Thomas could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited about what the factory is able to get out these days. They're, you know, they're, they're just getting it out the door and, uh, you know, we assemble it, we box it and we push it back out. That's right, kind of the market right. these days. And in time, hopefully we can start to push more newer stuff to the market. Uh, but these days we're, we're just, just keeping playing, up. Just keeping up. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, Eric, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the oh, time thanks so much. to show us this. It. Blade show, baby. It's, we're here. We're having fun. Make sure to uh, everyone check out the links in the description. Some of these things we do have up for pre-order already. Um, of course, not the, uh, the newly revealed stuff. We'll make sure to leave a link to all of that below and keep following us for more Blade Show coverage. Thank you. Thank you, sir.